tropical storm in the eastern Pacific and other developments on today's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Weather Bulletin for July 31st. Well, we've reached the end of the month. How quick was that? And we have a new tropical storm in the eastern Pacific that we've designated. It is still 94E and not an official tropical storm yet. I'm not really sure why. Code blue right now for the Atlantic for that other area of interest, which is currently moving through the Lesser Antilles and could become a significant tropical cyclone either in the Gulf or on the other side off the east coast of Florida. We're still not sure on that. Uh, which way it will go. It's going to be a very close call. Day 61 of Atlantic hurricane season and we are giving that system a 60% chance of development like the National Hurricane Center did at their last update. Well this is the Eastern Pacific. This storm which will should hopefully be recognized officially later today. I thought it would have been overnight but it will be heading towards the west northwest and strengthening and we have two other areas of interest there as well. 40% which will be in and around that storm there and that 80% behind it another system could become quite powerful later on. This is the western pacific where we've now not got any areas of interest. We've uh, scrubbed all of the systems that were active and so we are entering another relatively quiet period. North Indian Ocean, quite a lot of cloud cover still off the coast of India, but it's still only monsoonal activity. This is expected. We don't usually see storms forming at this time of year over there, uh, but still lots of rain across mainly eastern India today. In the southwest Indian Ocean, two little banks of cloud there. Certainly the one on the eastern side is much larger uh, through the eastern part of the Indian Ocean. Hardly any land areas though being impacted by that and no tropical cyclones on the horizon. So let's take a look at 94E. It is 503 kilometers from Manzanillo. 5.45 from Lazaro Cadena, 6.47 from Puerto Vallarta, 6.56 from Socorro Island and 9.68 from Cabo San Lucas. Well, the storm is heading west-northwestwards or maybe even still westwards at this time at a relatively slow pace, about 11 miles per hour. Um, and we are expecting gradual strengthening, possibly a, a more rapid phase uh, later on over the weekend. But at the moment, it looks like it's going to be only steady strengthening. Let's look at it on satellite imagery and I'll let you decide whether you think that's a tropical storm or not. It certainly looks like one to me and uh, gradual movement westwards is the order of the day. Lots of convection blowing up off the top side of it there, uh, blowing up into Mexico, uh, not fully related with the storm itself. But there it is, a close up view of it right now with a decent rotation, convection blowing up on most sides of the storm. And this is the Atlantic system, obviously no circulation on this at this point. Uh, but what is associated with it is moving through the Leeward Islands right now. Good view of it there. And this is some more imagery from the Force 13 floaters, which you can find on our website of Invest 94E. Uh, again, slowly moving west or maybe slightly west-northwestwards. Convection blowing up there all across the western side. A little, little bit lacking on the east side, it has to be said. Uh, but we do expect that strengthening will be occurring, again, relatively slow at first. So there we are. Let's take a look at the other system, the uh, other Invest uh, 95E. This is the one to the southwest of it, which we're giving 40% chance of development. Not looking so great at the moment, but it does have some loose rotation and a little bit of convection blowing up on the western side. It's going to struggle in the shadow of 94E, uh, but some models do suggest that it could develop into a brief tropical cyclone. Now here's a look at the east coast of the United States. There's still a lot of dry air and even Saharan dust entering the western part of the Atlantic there, some of it over Bermuda. Uh, and this is the Caribbean. Obviously we're looking at that area of interest. Hasn't been designated as an invest yet, but they're giving it a 60% chance of development. 
Uh, not too much to say about it really to be honest, just a bit of cloud. And this is the Eastern Atlantic off the coast of Africa, one or two waves moving just offshore right now, uh, but as usual uh, they do uh, take a hit as soon as they move over water. Now here's the Eastern Pacific, of course the storm on the left hand side, and on the right there eventually we're going to see the development of this other area of interest that we've got an 80% chance for, still no real uh, designation for that one yet. And this is uh, looking out over the further west there, that other Invest 95E near the middle of the picture there. And this is the Western Pacific, a big band uh, stretching southwards there, a front digging down, uh, but no systems look like they're going to take advantage of that over there despite the very warm sea surface temperatures. And in the North Indian Ocean, we've got this uh, monsoonal shower, big area actually extending from Bangladesh, the coast there, all the way through Eastern and Northern India. And in the Arabian Sea, not too much going on. A few smaller scale thunderstorms today for Western Pakistan and off the coast towards Oman. Sea surface temperatures are very warm and still warming up in the eastern Pacific, over 30 degrees in a few spots off the coast of Mexico where the invest is, it is around 29 to 30 degrees as well. The Gulf of Mexico, really high temperatures there and that will be important when we look at the model runs in a little bit there because those temperatures are sky high, pushing 32 degrees near the coast of Florida and in the northeast Gulf and along the Gulf Stream as well. And this is the western Pacific, a large area of warm water as well huge areas really, uh, vast tracts of the ocean at uh, 26 degrees or high, almost the whole screen and the North Indian Ocean as well a few areas there getting up to higher temperatures off the coast of Bangladesh and West Bengal around 29 to 30 degrees Compared to average, the Atlantic is very much above average from the main development region through the Caribbean into the Gulf of Mexico, up to 3 or 4 degrees above the subtropics, even warmer. Eastern Pacific also looking good ahead of these systems, up to 3 degrees above as well. Western Pacific tropics are slightly mod more moderate, but the uh, upper latitudes there, really high temperatures compared to normal around Japan and Korea. Well, oceanic heat content is still looking really good in the Western Pacific, even after Typhoon Gamey, and they're actually recovering quite a bit near Taiwan, back into the yellows there, so a huge amount of energy there in the Western Pacific off the Philippines. And in the Eastern Pacific as well, it is creeping up along the coast of Mexico, in general though still a little bit lacking. In the Atlantic, huge amounts of very high amounts of energy there, uh, along the, well, from the Lesser Antilles through the Caribbean Sea, a large area there past Jamaica, and through the Cayman Islands into the Gulf of Mexico, two big banks there of very high energy as well. Here's the GFS computer model then for the next five days, and we're taking a look at the Atlantic first of all. You can also see that second Eastern Pacific system forming there near the end of that five day period. And there's that Atlantic system, GFS, calling for it to strengthen into the Eastern Gulf of Mexico. Got to put out a warning here. There is a large amount of uncertainty. Ensembles yesterday were suggesting it could go anywhere from central Texas to Nova Scotia in the next 10 days. ECMWF is still further east and one or two other models are as well along the east coast of Florida, not west. Eastern Pacific, looking at these two systems then, obviously the first one that we've already declared a tropical storm, eventually becoming a hurricane within that five day period. That second system, the 40% towards the southwest, could develop and actually swirl back around towards the northeast underneath 94E. And then that third system as well forming into that tropical storm. Uh, and then that one that we're really watching for potential rapid strengthening later on. Well, if this uh, scenario comes to pass from the GFS, and it is the only one calling for this at the moment, there could be a big rain event along the Florida Panhandle region. Uh, once it really gets going there, you can see the track of this potential storm moving up into the area around Panama City towards uh, Pensacola, and we're looking at very high rainfall amounts if that happens in the next ten day seven days. This is, sorry, 25 inches right there if that happens, uh, but we're still very, very unsure. We got to really hammer that point. We're not sure what's going to happen, but up to 10, up to four inches, I should say, across the Greater Antilles and six inches is on the Florida Peninsula. So this is why that happens. Look at this. Becomes a hurricane. Stalls off the coast.
coast for several days and still stalling and strengthening towards major hurricane status. Another landfall there near Pensacola back inland over Alabama and then possibly back out again somewhere near New Orleans uh, and then eventually it finally moves inland properly for the last time as a much weakened tropical storm after day 10 and then moves northwards. Highly skeptical on that scenario, guys. We really got to uh, watch this closely. It will change. Eastern Pacific, a barrage of storms here continuing. Uh, that 80% system uh, taking the full uh, energy there from that other system that was around it, uh, becoming a substantial hurricane. A GFS isn't as... Uh, that's actually a fourth storm, beg my pardon there. A fourth storm tries to form briefly there. And then uh, the GFS, not as aggressive as it used to be on that hurricane, but still a substantial one at that. Scan the barcode and that will take you through to the Force 13 merch store where you can take a look at all of our items as well as our full season and individual storm animations on request. And our still waiting Mahone t-shirt is still waiting uh, to be uh, discarded when we finally get that damn storm. And it's not going to be this time in the Silly Range either. Those hurricanes moving off towards uh, the Abyss in the Eastern Pacific. Maybe another system there in the later part of this run as well. Um, moving up towards the Northwest, although it really struggles. So not too much to look at there in that super long range. You can just about see that Atlantic system uh, finally pushing inland through uh, Mississippi. Moving northwards, eventually northeastwards. But not too much else going on at all anywhere else in the Silly Range. Well, back on this day last year, though, we did have a big storm that was active. Hot on the heels of Doc Suri, it was Typhoon Canoon, a Category 4 peak which was just about to occur. Doc Suri was inland and was the remnant low there in northern China. We also had Tropical Depression 5E, which was about to become our next storm. And even though it was last year, my mind's completely gone and I've forgotten what that storm ended up being. So there's a little trivia thing for you all in the comments section there. 5E, what storm? did it become you tell me that was on this day last year well back to today then and the next name in the Atlantic is Debbie and that would be a pretty a damning Debbie in the eastern Pacific it's still Carlotta because we've still not had this storm named yet after that it's Daniel in the central Pacific it is still of course Hone in the Western Pacific, the next name is Maria. And we're still quite scared about that one after its history. And in the North Indian Ocean, the next name is, of course, Asna. 28 storms so far this year now. We are still very much flagging below average. It looks like it's going to be that way for the rest of the year now. In the Australian region, the next name is Robin. Southwest Indian Ocean is Ansha. And in the South Pacific, it is Pitta. That's it from today's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We may not have one tomorrow. I may be out chasing in the UK here, but we'll be back again at some point soon. Become an ultimate fan today.